Hi, and welcome to ECCB Connects. March 12th was a historic day for the people of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union when the ECCB launched its EC Digital Currency Pilot Project. What is a digital currency? What does having this mean for the people of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union? And how did this journey begin? Stay with us. We'll tell you more when we get back. Welcome back to ECCB Connects. The EC digital currency will be issued by the ECCB and distributed by licensed bank and non-bank financial institutions. Now this digital currency is not to be confused with cryptocurrency. Fintech developer Alex Strawn explains. When people hear cryptocurrency, they have a tendency to think Bitcoin, etc. But that is what I would refer to as the legacy definition when you hear cryptocurrency because realistically, currency is usually a medium of exchange that is backed by a government and or a central bank. So there's some element of security, surety, etc. Notwithstanding that, just like with any currency, you could have ex um, exchange fluctuations. But when you look at bitcoins, etc., it is not really a currency in the strictest sense because it's just computer codes driven based on popularity. So the willingness of persons to hold it or not hold it or to mind it, etc., is not backed by anything. There's no persons you could run to and demand that they indemnify you or exchange it for some other asset, etc. It is just based on a willingness of persons to hold it, period. So we tend to refer to those, especially in, 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 in modern times, as crypto assets. It's, um, it's based on supply and demand and it's based on the willingness of persons to, to, to basically transact and or keep it. And you have had schemes such as pump and dump where people try to just try to drive up the volume and, uh, and exploit the, the popularity of it, etc. Now, on the other hand, when we talk about a digital currency, we are talking to a large extent in terms of the term fiat, a currency backed by a government and or its representative central bank. What do we mean by that? At some point in time, you can exchange this for whether paper money, um, not so much based on a, 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 a supply and a demand, but if you, it, the, the central bank or the government have to be able to, to, to say, listen, this, we are on the right, and so whether it is in a digital format or not, you can exchange it readily for the equivalent in its paper or physical form. That is a markedly different. In other words, it's basically a one-to-one -one ratio, a near one-to-one -one ratio between its digital format and its physical format. So they tend to be synonymous. Now, you, when you take cryptocurrency again, there's no physical representation, quote-unquote, of this because the, 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 the very term cryptocurrency is based on that definition of it being in a sort of computer code format, public, private key, you're holding it in a particular electronic wallet. You lose that, you lose, I mean, in that particular wallet. But the digital format, when you talk about a digital currency, yes, it is electronic just like anything else, but it's not just code. That code is the exact equivalent of, the, of its paper denomination and they are supposed to be readily exchangeable, one to one. So if the paper is legal tender, so too is its digital format, meaning therefore that if I need to exchange this and demand a pa the paper equivalent, somebody can say, well, no, 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 no. You have to get the same representation. Um, as you would get from its physical format. And I think that is, I think education and usage um, is what's gonna help clarify this because persons would be able to understand well, this is the same as that. It's the same as having your bank account, you, you, you log on online and what you're seeing online is the equivalent as if you had the physical money except that it's in a digital format, that's digital money. 
When we refer to digital currency, we refer to the money that you have in your bank account. We refer to the money that you access uh, using your ATM card. It's the same money, except that it, uh, when you use the ATM card, you convert it from digital format, from electronic format, to physical format. And it is the same sort of, of transitory, the same sort of easy exchange that you must get when we are referring to digital currency versus cryptocurrency. The EC digital currency does not mean that the ECCB is eliminating cash. In fact, both the EC digital currency and the cash will coexist in our financial sphere. I want to make it pellucidly clear the ECCB does not intend to eliminate the use of cash. And let me repeat this. The ECCB does not intend to eliminate the use of cash. Cash has its convenience and will continue to play a very important role in our economy. And that for the foreseeable future. That said, the ECCB is committed to reduce our region's use of cash and checks. And you may ask why. Well, here's why. In the ECCU, about 80% of all payments are effected using cash or checks. When we survey our payments landscape, we cannot help but conclude that payments are still too slow and too expensive. Many of us know only too well the high costs associated with certain banking services. Although a full-scale analysis of the social costs of physical cash in the ECCU has not yet been carried out, it is indisputable that the costs of cash services, including transporting, storing, insuring, securing, are extremely high. Invariably, invariably, these high costs are passed on to the consumer. Many people do not recognize that, but that is what happens. And it is also obvious to us that many businesses do not recognize the true and full costs of cash services. This reality, however, means, and given the fact that the informal sector is so important in our, our region, means that the informal sector bears a disproportionate burden in respect of the cost of cash. The reality is that actors in the informal sector bear a significant burden of the cost inefficiencies of cash transactions. Lest we become too critical of small businesses, we should also acknowledge that they too face real constraints. For example, some of our businesses are required to pay as much as 3.5% on every credit card sale. That exorbitant charge reduces and in some instances removes the incentives for small businesses to offer their customers electronic options such as credit cards and debit cards. And if they do, it limits their ability to offer customers discounts because of the costs that they're paying to provide the card services. They experience what is sometimes referred to as financial frictions. In an effort to reduce these financial frictions, the ECCB and Bit Inc. reached an agreement to develop and pilot a digital version of the EC dollar. And thus, the journey began. Bit first approached the ECCB about two years ago with the idea of a digital EC dollar. As we continued thinking about the transformation of the ECCU, we became intrigued by the possibility of a digital fiat currency for our region. At that time, we were finalizing our strategic plan, and we made a decision to test and learn more about this idea through a pilot. Five months after the launch of our plan, we signed an MOU with BIT in March of last year to collaborate on this idea, and so our journey to this pilot began. The decision of the ECGB to partner with BIT was premised on several considerations including our shared values in respect of innovation for development, our vision for a digitally integrated region, BITS capacity, technical and financial, and BITS Caribbean identity, both in terms of its presence as well as its people. The ECCB central bank digital currency pilot involves a securely minted and issued digital version of the EC dollar. 
Sybil Welch, chairperson of the ECCB FinTech Working Group, outlines how the pilot will be rolled out and implemented. The project would have 12 months of development, and this development is iterative. We have had eight months to date of engaging stakeholders, be it financial institutions, government institutions, consumers, professional bodies, peer central banks. And we will continue that because based on those consultations, we've had requirements. Now you want to validate those requirements, test those requirements. So in the development of the solution, the, every point of that development is about making sure that we are meeting the needs of the persons who will be using that digital currency, the platform, the design, the psychology of how it's going to be used, how people want to engage with the digital wallets, what sort of um, um, interfaces they're looking for. Um, and all of these issues, how the merchant's needs will differ from the consumer needs, how the financial institution needs would differ from others. And so we have to make sure that we combine these needs into a solution that meets all of the approved, approved expectations and hopes of this. So we'll be developing, it's iterative, and throughout the iteration, we'll be consulting representatives in all of the islands that represents these groups, households, con um, and well, households will be consumers, merchants, financial institutions, non-bank financial institutions, digital wallet service providers. You want to be able in that lab test to really test the usability and other functionalities before you go into a live deployment. And so it's a continuous and education, continuous sensitization of the communities across the region, not only those who are going to be in the pilot. We want to emphasize that while a pilot is a limited, de limited deployment, and so you can't go to all eight member countries at the same time, that we will be having the lab test in all parties, all countries will be able to participate. When we get to the live deployment, you want to have a limited um, sphere around which you're going to deploy that so that you can control, so that you can look at it, manage it, troubleshoot, rectify before you go mass live. And so that will be six months for live deployment and 12 months for development. Throughout it, we'll be engaging the population from the ECCB's website, from webinars online, from direct going into the communities. We're going to get into the churches. We're going to get into the schools. We're going to get in at the market. We're going to get in the business association, the farmers associations, professional groups, all of these groups so they understand this is their project. It is for them. It is, they are the reason why we're doing this. And so they have to feel the project. And so we're inviting everybody to come on board. You'll be hearing in short um, time. Uh, we're looking for persons who can actually listen, say to us, we want to be trained on this thing so we can be DXC brand ambassadors going into our schools, our communities, and our churches and talking about this and giving our perspectives. Those perspectives will be really taken on board by the ECCB as we develop this. I say the time to act is now. I issue a clarion call for partnership. We invite all of our banks, financial institutions, non-bank financial institutions to join us in this endeavor to make their wallet services available uh, so that we can test and learn from this experience. We also invite our telecommunication service providers and other technology companies to join in this effort as together we develop a digital ecosystem from which our region can reap huge digital dividends. Most importantly, I invite, we invite the citizens and residents of the ECCU to share our views, to share your views on how this pilot can best serve you and serve and advance our development. And now with laser-like focus, let us move forward with the EC Digital Currency Pilot Project, determined to make a significant difference in the lives of the people of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. We're almost at the end of season nine of ECCB Connects. Our final program airs Wednesday, 27 March, 2019. While we're on break, be sure to stay connected with us on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. 
Join us in May 2019 for new and informative programs. ECCB Connects, who we are, what we do, and how we serve you. We've come to the end of this episode of ECCB Connects. Join us next week for the final episode of Season 9, where we'll continue our discussion on the EC Digital Currency Project. Thanks for watching and join us next week.